sharp. Uh, this is a historic occasion. This is a great honor uh, for one of our own 50 years in the business, uh, fixing airplanes, making sure our passengers stay safe, and make sure that we all go home and sleep really well at night because you take good care of our airplanes. So thank, thank you. you. There's, there's two awards that we give that are the highest awards. Uh, one is uh, Wright Brothers Award, and the other is the Charles Taylor. So and you have to have 50 years of pr pretty much unblemished record. Uh, and we keep track of, you know, all your ins and outs and all Surprise, your wrongs yeah. and rights. Yeah. So, but um, we have people working around here, here watching you. But it's a, it's a tough award to get. Uh, it really is. There's probably only about 2,300 uh, in the world that actually have this particular certificate. Go ahead. I know you have Aaron, you have... Should I use the mic? Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that's my son right there, the, uh, Daniel. He's my oldest. What a great son. Aaron, uh, the youngest. And my brother, Mark. No, the youngest. The oldest one. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is kind of an exciting thing for me. Uh, it's been a long career. It's been a good career. Uh, I've enjoyed most of it. Uh, United has been the primary. I've been with United 50 years. Uh, I was laid off twice, uh, a couple of strikes, uh, you know, and all these other things that happened. But uh, I've really enjoyed, uh, seriously enjoyed working for this company. Uh, they've given me uh, a lot of latitude. They let me uh, take care of their airplanes, the safety, and their people, which to me are both as about as important as you can get. Uh, with that responsibility comes, you know, a lot of things, a lot of responsibility that uh, I've given it my all, and uh, I hope that I left a little bit of a landmark with. We don't, we don't want to make them crime right now. Let's wait till... <laughs> 1903. The place was Kitty Hawk. Something new was happening in the sky above North Carolina. Humans at last found a way to join the birds. It was the first time ever. A machine carrying a man powered itself successfully through the air. The story of Wilbur and Orville Wright is a story about those who inspired, those who touched their lives, and those who aided the Wright brothers before, during, and after their dream came to life. These experiences forged who the brothers would become. What Wilbur and Orville Wright achieved would both open up the skies and shrink the planet. It would change civilization permanently. solved many problems before they first flew at Kitty Hawk on a windy December day in 1903. Thanks to their glider experiments, the Wrights knew they could control an aircraft and sustained flight, but they lacked a power source strong enough to propel the aircraft and light enough to carry it into the air. The engine that solved that last problem lifted the idea of sustained, controlled, and powered heavier-than-air flight from a dream to a reality. Three men were involved in the invention and development of the first powered airplane. That's right, three. Everyone knows about the Wright brothers, but that third man was Charles E. Charlie Taylor, a quiet genius who loved cigars and the sound of machinery. Although he contributed to one of man's greatest achievements, powered flight, his name was almost lost in aviation history. And if it had not been for Charlie, that first powered airplane would never have gotten off the ground. In 1898, when Charlie started his own machine shop, Orville and Wilbur often brought him special jobs from their own bicycle shop. Charlie started to work for the Wright Brothers on June 15, 1901, doing routine repairs on bicycles. This let the Wright Brothers pursue their experiments with gliders, which included many trips to Kitty Hawk. In the 80s, and then I later went to Dayton and built bicycles for the Stoddard Manufacturing Company. 
and they were just starting up in the bicycle business. And I got acquainted with the Wrights and I built bicycles for them. Wrights had built the first aircraft engine. Orville Wright designed and Charlie Taylor constructed the first upright four-cylinder engine of the sort that would power Wright aircraft over the next several years. And Charlie was the first person to investigate a powered fatal accident flight. This award recognizes individuals who have exhibited professionalism, skill, and aviation expertise for at least 50 years in the aircraft maintenance profession as master mechanics. And then um, there's another presentation uh, actually after, after this. But so during these, uh, when we do this research, uh, we actually, we, we ask the applicant to give us information. I'll have the applicant come up here and explain some of the pictures. And where's Clark at? So Clark actually helped out a lot. We're just going to do a little uh, timeline of my aviation career in uh, 55 years, actually. So it started, uh, I grew up in San Lorenzo, across the bay over there, and uh, graduated high school in 1966. And at that time, uh, the Vietnam War was raging, and there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of work at uh, different uh, military bases, and so I went to work at Alameda Naval Air Station as a uh, sheet metal well aircraft metalsmith helper, and uh, which was kind of a I didn't know what the heck it was, you know, because uh, it was uh, not clear. So I went to work over there. And uh, there was a lot of World War II vets that were still uh, employed. It was towards the end of their careers, towards the end of their life. So these guys uh, had been working in the industry for years and years and years. You know, they were, went through the war and all that. So uh, I hooked on with the, the right people, and they trained me in uh, the aircraft metalsmith uh, job. The sheet metal mechanic, and you know, I had all the, the information that they were looking for the different types of fasteners, sealants, repairs, uh, manuals, that type of thing. So, uh, when I hooked on at United, it, it seemed different to me in a way. Uh, when you worked for the Navy, you know, they provided everything tools and um, medical and all these other things. Well, when you came to United, you had to buy your own tools, there was a little bit more to it than, than that. You know. But, uh, so I worked about a year here, uh, went through sheet metal school, and that's when you had to put a flush patch together and things like that, and they watched you really close. It wasn't, uh, you know, they would uh, just sign you off. You had to show, uh, <laughs> yeah. you had to show that you knew what you were doing. That, you know, like, so all of a sudden, you know, out of a job type of thing, you know, here comes unemployment, that type of deal. And at that time, there was no work in aviation. There was Nobody was hiring, military wasn't hiring, they were winding down. The uh, airlines for sure weren't doing anything. There was guys laid off everywhere. Anyway, you know, you learn from people. They uh, teach you a lot about life, about maintenance, about camaraderie, about uh, what we do. Uh, the FAA's mission is to provide the safest, most efficient aerospace system in the world. We use many tools to make this happen, including recognizing the individual people that have helped to make this Earl system great. We recognize great mechanics by honoring them with the Charles Taylor Award uh, Master Mechanic. The Master Mechanic Award is presented to those airmen who have 50 years or more of practicing and promoting safe aircraft maintenance. The Open Flight Standards District Office is proud to present you with this Charles Taylor Mass Mechanic Award. Your professionalism as an airman has contributed to the safety of our national airspace system and has enabled safe air travel by many Americans for more than half a century of flight. So, and then it goes on to what we're actually presenting. So, and that's from the, uh, the office manager, Dennis Hall. And he actually, he wanted to be, he's usually here, he was at the last one, um, but there's, the FAA is going through a, a lot of changes. Know, changes right now, so um, so he wasn't able to be here on, on this one, but uh, he just uh, no no problem. So another thing, I think I'm going to have Daniel come on up here for a second. So uh, another thing that it, 
that the video talked about was the pin. So we have one pin for um, your spouse, your wife, or your aunt. Um, but we also have a pin for Phil, your father. So would you like to do the honors and pin that, pin that on, please? Pin is on his chest. <laughs> nice. <laughs> mentioned to you before, there's only about 2,300 uh, Charles Taylor Award recipients, uh, 250 here in the state of California, uh, and I, I think there's probably even less Wright Brothers Awards, so as you can tell, the uh, award is very hard to get. Um, I don't know how many, do we have any Charles Taylor Award recipients yeah. in the room right now? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I'm just, no, I'm just saying that. So usually the Charles Taylor Award recipients, they, you know, they re reissue it and then they, you know, they retire. And we try to recruit them and to be fast team reps because we have representatives on the fast on the safety team. And we try to rec recruit them because they have fast knowledge, experience, and they're safety minded. So we try to, you know, we, we have a whole agenda that we try to get out there to the industry, and we actually use these these gentlemen to get that to get that across. So. Um, Mr. Mears, yeah. I'm going to actually ask you if you would mind if you would present our next Charles Taylor Award recipient. Wow. Uh, So many of my siblings, I think my first memory, one of my first memories is getting on a United Airlines flight. And in fact, I can remember exactly where we went. We were going to Hawaii. We were going to Hawaii, uh, it was me, my dad, my mom, my sister. Aaron was not born yet. It's probably 1984, 1984. So you just started back again. Yeah. And uh, I remember, it was probably two and a half, three years old. I remember getting on the airplane and I remember the smell smell of jet fuel, the smell of coffee, I remember how tall the pilots were, how cool they looked. And I remember sitting down, I think we were probably in coach, probably in coach. We oh, first, first class. First class. First class. <laughs> first class. Uh, I remember sitting down and just thinking like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is the, the plane is so cool, it's so, it's so big and vast. And then, I could see how much pride was on your face at the time. I remember that very distinctly. Like, you were, you were very proud. Uh, and then we went to Still Hawaii. Am. Still am. Yeah. We went to Hawaii. Uh, and we've had so, so many, so many trips since then. So many flights, so many flights since then. Another thing that you guys might not know about my father is that he loves baseball. Loved baseball. We were fans of the Oakland A's, for better or for worse. Mostly for worse. <laughs> some, some really tough years there. <clears throat> in the 90s, uh, we were going to a lot of games. Uh, we, in the <clears throat> mid-90s, we uh, went and saw the Orioles play. And at the time, we saw uh, Cal Ripken Jr. Cal Ripken Jr. was uh, about to break Lou Gehrig's uh, streak in consecutive games played. Yeah. Um, uh, Lou Gehrig's streak was uh, 2000. I can't remember, but I remember uh, Ripken's eventual record was 2,612. So we get to the game, and uh, there's batting practice, and 
you know, my dad, he likes to heckle people, so <laughs> we're there. And uh, Cal Ripken is uh, warming up. He say he's signed his autographs, and my dad goes, "Hey, Cal, you gonna play tonight?" And Cal Ripken kind of looks up, like, "What?" Like a lot of people were saying stuff, but like that, that actually got through and registered with him. He kind of looks up, and he's kind of like, "Is this guy? Can, can this guy be serious?" I tell you, he looks tired. He looks tired to tonight, Cal. Sit this one out. Sit this one out. So I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. Believe. But eventually, Cal Ripken went on to break Lou Gehrig's record and become Iron Man of baseball most consecutive games played. Cal Ripken did that over 16 seasons. My dad has hit 50 years in the aviation industry, 55 years, 50 years in, with United Airlines in the aviation industry. And you are the Iron Man of, uh, of, of, of baseball. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> you are the Iron Man of United Airlines. I'll bring it back again. So, Last year, uh, for his 70th birthday, uh, my dad and I went to uh, Ireland to go see U2 play. Uh, so we jump on a uh, flight, and uh, just me and him, we get on, and the smell was the same. I could smell the coffee, I could smell the jet fuel, smell me. I could smell you. <laughs> Even in, even in Oakland, even in San Francisco. We get on, the pilots are a little bit shorter now than I was when I was two and a half. The plane's nicer, definitely nicer. We sat down, we were, this time we were in first class, and uh, I could see the same look on your face, the same look of pride, the same smile, and I realized that not much has changed in the last 50 years. The planes have, but you haven't. Still got the feeling. Still got the feeling. So to my dad, the Iron Man of United Airlines. And Mario, after after today, actually, you can sleep at night, okay? Because you have two supervisors on midnights in San Francisco that are actually recipients of Charles Taylor Award. You know? wow. so, I'm the only one that can say that. <laughs> so Phil, to honor your uh, cabin skills. We're giving you a 737 cabin window with, with the down the Right. Oh. And actually, it's a part of the Charles Taylor uh, celebration here. And it says, congratulations on your excellent service with United Airlines and also supporting the United States military uh, as a civilian. You have demonstrated leadership, professionalism, and experience throughout your entire aviation career. Thank you. It takes a lot of pride in, the, in his work in aviation. It takes a lot of pride in living a good, great life. You know, the place that he's been. Uh, the only thing I learned from Phil, if he ever invites you to for lunch, make sure he takes his wallet, okay? <laughs> Well, <laughs> right, congratulations, Phil. Thanks a lot. Good to meet you. This will include our Charles Taylor Award presentation, but um, I know that this 50 year at United Airlines is, I mean, it's, it's pretty outstanding. Of course, it doesn't do, uh, you know, it doesn't outdo the Charles Taylor Award. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I come second. There you go. So. Welcome everybody. Thank you for helping us get Phil the love that he truly <laughs> deserves. I can't wait till Paul Rizzo comes up here and gives him some of that love. <laughs> but, but truly, it's 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 a pleasure for me and an honor to to uh, come and recognize Phil's contributions. There's been a lot of people he's worked for. Jason Meeks over here. Um, there's so many people through for 50 years, 50 plus years that uh, Phil has worked with, worked for, and had worked for him. Um, I've known Phil since we merged, and you know, just like Phil said to our inspectors about helping the new mechanics, that's Phil. When we first came on board, we, we had a work together as a team, that's what mergers make you do if, yeah. if, you, if you're fortunate enough to remain in management. <laughs> in a surviving company, right? Got thinned out. Got thinned out, right? So, so Phil, uh, as Mikey and, and, and Paul, I got to tell you, um, he exemplifies what you all are. You all welcomed us. We had issues we had to resolve. They weren't always ones we agreed on. 
But at the end of the day, we made United go forward together. And this man, my wife, asked me, hey, how's Phil? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he fell asleep in front of her at the uh, Half Moon first event. <laughs> and she's like, hey, uh, who's that guy sleeping there? <laughs> he, he was midnight shift, honey, that's why he's tired. He's tired. But, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to rob Paul and Hector and probably John Fox of any of that good time that they're going to tell us a little bit on Phil. But I just want to say congratulations, Phil. You deserve this and so much more. And, you know, Jimmy came up and did what I couldn't do which keep tabs on you. So, so <laughs> <laughs> all the way to Chicago, I would get the Phil reports on where Phil was at, where he was going with his boys. Um, it's, it's really an honor, and I just want to say thank you for how you've treated us, all of us. Joe Moses is here. You really exemplify what makes United great and why we're united and why we uh, unite the world, right? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see everybody. It's good to be back in San Francisco. Uh, I'll keep this short, but I would like to thank this entire San. Would like to thank this entire San Francisco team. You guys took me in over three and a half years ago. It made me uh, feel very welcome. I couldn't have done it without this entire team here in San Francisco. I'm proud of my leadership team here. You guys have come through in so many ways. Um, Mario's a little more eloquent speaking sometimes in front of people, as everybody knows. Uh, well, one thing I want to thank Phil's children for teaching him how to use an iPhone. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Still working on it. <laughs> With that being said, stop him from sending me text messages at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> when you're overseas. So, the Phil for you. I know. And we still don't know where stay, uh, shop three twelve is. Where you always disappear too. But I would like to thank everybody. Joe knows. I would like to thank everybody here. It, it is an honor to be up here to present Phil this award. I was had the privilege of having Mike Mears also be a Charles Taylor, and we also have Mr. Shoup. And I don't he's here right now, but he's now in the engine shop. So it's been a, this Mr. Kapelka, he's here too. It's nice to see Bob. It's good to see everybody come back. It, it means a lot to Phil. It means a lot to all of us. He's meant a lot to all of us. He continues to mean a lot to all of us. And I want everybody to know that. Uh, Phil, and, uh, you've been an inspiration to me. You really have. You've uh, showed me a lot since I came here. And uh, He is the deputy mayor of San Francisco, so he seems to know everything about everybody. Yep. So It's been a very good relationship. Right. With that being said, Phil, it, again, it's been my honor. I'm so glad to be here, and I hope we continue to see you around for another five or ten years. <laughs> Maybe you can get off graveyard. So what we do here, what we do, we do have a 50-year plaque for United Airlines for his 50 years of service with United Airlines. And we also have a picture. We got the right airplane. Yes, sir. So Phil, well, like baby, you, it's, uh, yeah. so, correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, on behalf of United Airlines, the entire United Airlines team, we want to thank you for your 50 years of dedicated service. Thank you so much. I just want to point out to Mario that when I had the department, my supervisors weren't kissing. <laughs> and let, let me tell you, Fox wanted to. Fox wanted to. And I wouldn't let him. I don't know what's happened here under your leadership, but hey. I'm just going to let that go. You know, I live in California. Thank you. I live in California. Meet me in our time. Well, let, let me tell you about Bill, okay? Uh, everything everybody said here is true. Uh, I met Bill basically when I ended up with the inspection department in Oakland. Yeah. I mean, I knew who Bill was, and everybody did. You know, this loser. I mean, this guy was, uh, over there. But uh, when I got over to Oakland, he was one of the few guys that actually understood why I ended up with the department, what I wanted to take over Oakland or any of that. I hate driving across the bridges, <laughs> you know, and you guys that do it every day, I have, have no envy for you. I hate the bridges. And, uh, but I, he took me in and showed me what the ropes were and I appreciated that. 
But then I really got to know him when he goes over <laughs> and down and came over here, right? And, and if you've never spent any time with Phil, Phil is one funny guy. Your dad is one funny guy. He sees humor and stuff that sometimes you think, why is that funny? Then when you stop and think about it, it's pretty funny. So I'm going to tell a couple of stories that are, you might not uh, want me to tell them, but they're true. And uh, Mario said that you were asleep. He passed out at the, uh, at the golf tournament. I can see you. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, let me tell you, when I think every third hole over there, they had a drink cart. Well, you don't have to drink every third hole. <laughs> you do realize that. You don't have to drink every third hole. But some guys, they have to partake. And I can remember the last time I volunteered, the uh, vice president, uh, third guy in command of the United, he came up to me, and we were working the 17th hole, right? And uh, closest to the pin. And uh, he said, gee, um, how come you guys aren't drinking? I said, well, of course workers can't drink, sir. I says, but some asshole put margaritas in those cups. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was drinking, right? But uh, it was kind of funny. So Phil and I decided we were going to not drive after the golf tournament, and we would rent a hotel room, right? So um, we go, and we drink until about 2 o'clock. They threw us out of the place, and we get down the road. We stayed at this, you know, motel. And you know, being the golf tournament, they charge us like 690 bucks or some ridiculous price like that for the room. So we get there, and Phil's loaded to the gills, and I was probably three quarters full, right? But he was, he was completely, and he made all the reservations. He had all the information. Well, the guy behind the counter, he's about a nickel smarter than Forrest Gump, right? I mean, he's working the midnight shift. Sorry, sorry guys, but you know, that's where we put those midnight people. You know? And uh, the, um, he doesn't have any reservations for us, right? And there's, we're in no shape to drive any further than we did. I mean, we shouldn't have drove a yeah, small distance we went. And uh, Phil goes, I, ha I have the stuff here in my briefcase. Phil goes behind the counter where the guy's working, right? And I'm expecting him to fire up the computer and, and pick up the phone and everything. I just, he's made himself at home behind him. <laughs> And the guy, he's kind of freaking out. Hey, you're not supposed to be behind here. And Phil's digging through the stuff. And he goes, I can't find my credit card. I can't find my wallet. So finally, I, I put up my credit card, right? And I put it up. And I take care of everything. And we get into the room. And I said to Phil, I said to Phil, we have a, we had twin beds. Thank God we didn't get a, a king. <laughs> But, tell the whole story now? I'm telling the whole story. Tell the whole story. We'll get to the romantic part of it. But so I said to Phil, Phil go, I go, Phil, do you mind if I watch the tonight show or something? He goes, yeah, well, I made maybe 30 seconds of the night show, I pass out. He's passed out. I wake up about 4:30 in the morning. I'm freezing, god darn cold. Phil and the room stunk. I mean, here's two drunk guys, B.O. Passing gas, you can imagine. You know, you, you, we've all been there, except for the ladies, obviously. But uh, we've all been there. It's how bad it can be. And he's got all the windows open. We're on the coast, you know. And anybody lives over Pacific or Half Moon Bay, it gets damn cold at night over there, right? It gets damn cold. That fog comes in, and I'm freezing cold. I look over, and here's Phil, stark naked, laying on top of the bunk. <laughs> Well, my therapist says I got about three more years. To I'll probably be okay. I can sleep through the night without waking up and, and sweat terror. It, it, it was one of the worst nights I've ever had. I woke up sometimes with people next to me after drinking and say, oh my God, this was beyond this. I mean, completely naked. Oh my God. Have you ever seen your dad naked? Oh, that's not this. It is not a pretty slide. I can see so, when I feel my eyes. So I close all the windows and stuff, and Phil goes, it's too hot in here. I mean, we, we could have we could have uh, kept our beer cold. It was that cold. So he talked about his um, time at NASA. Well, you know, it sounds like he was this great crew chief and managing this airplane. And with a Convair, wasn't it? Convair 990, if you guys 
ever and know what those are. And there are probably only about 20 of them it's ever like a flew. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of about 20 of them ever flew. American Air. There, but Larry Perini and uh, Midwin. Midwin. Midwin were the other crew chiefs. And according to them, they did all the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did all the work. You Phil, those two. <laughs> Phil would be partaking with the pilots and, and stuff in the drinking side of it. He's taking over there, they added the other drinking. Well, they're supposed to fly out of Fairbanks the next morning, and they're in the hotel room, of the hotel lobby, waiting for Phil to show up. And you know, they, they have schedules. I mean, even though they're government workers, and we all know how, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't worry about the FAA anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they have schedules. Me, but there's no Phil. So they get the, the uh, desk clerk to go down to his room. They open the room, and Fairbanks, dead of winter, it's probably 30 below, snowstorm. They open the door, and Phil, again, so sweating hot, drunk as a skunk, opened up the windows. He's half covered in snow. He's blue. <laughs> he's, he's turning blue. <laughs> He almost killed himself up there, right? So I was trying to get you on the coast. See? Yeah, yeah, I guess. So Phil and drinking and cold weather, I, I don't know, you know. But, but I'll tell you what, I, I, I joke about it, but it's some of the most fun I've ever had, some of the most enjoyment. And, and I'll tell you one thing about Phil that I really appreciate it. You give him a job, he does his damnedest to do it. And he always did it. Yeah. Uh, my buddy and other girlfriend, <laughs> uh, Al Ramon couldn't make it today because okay. he's out with a uh, friend of his. And he said, well, the Charles Taylor Award, that's pretty prestigious. And it really is. I mean, I take him. I said, yeah, but it just means you're an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he is older than me. Mike's a lot older than I am. But it is, it is Not a very much. prestigious. And I just want to tell a quick story. Everybody in here is maintenance or maintenance related, right? We're all maintenance people, and that's where I spent 46 years, you know, pounding on airplanes and working on airplanes. I really enjoyed every minute of it. When I first came down to the base and I worked in the shops, just like you said, I would say about a third of the guys were World War II pilots yeah. and, and uh, waste gunners, right? Most of them were flying uh, guys. There were very few mechanics that came out of World War II and worked at United where I worked. And you know the one thing they all told me that and the movies never show you. The movies, you can't really believe it. It's just writers writing stories, right? I mean, they, they, but the way the movies make it look like the pilots and the, the bombers, especially in Europe, they flew every day, right? They flew every day and bombed the hell out of Germany and you know, other places. Well, they really didn't. Like they would say, if they had milk runs to the coast, to, to France, they would, they would fly the next day. It was, you know, they go over for an hour, fly over, drop some bombs, come back. But when they go into Germany or Austria or someplace, right, they're, they're three hours of getting shot at one way and three hours coming back. So the pilots, like they said, we didn't give a damn about the red line on the radial engines. We fireballed and somebody's trying to kill me. You know, I want to get the hell out of there. And plus they got shot. They said the real heroes of the air campaign in Europe for the mechanics, because we would fly like every three, four, or five days. The mechanics would work that whole time because these airplanes were shot. And the engines, you know, they red light them for four or five hours, keep them right there max. He said the engines were shot, they had to rebuild them. He said the mechanics were the unsung heroes, and they didn't have anything. Anybody else, yeah. real quick? Oh my God, Eddie. <laughs> Come on up, Eddie. <coughs> It's always really tough to fall, Paul. <laughs> and you did an amazing job giving an explanation of uh, your history. You, you did Thank a you. good job. Uh, I do want to say, Rich, I've got received three text messages. No one could find an inspector. Uh, all our airplanes are now yellow. Uh, thank you very much, Phil and, and, and Rich. I want to say a couple things. And the only question I had is, why isn't Roy in the family section? Where is Roy? Roy? Roy is. Roy was in here for a minute. Roy, Roy. I have never seen Phil without seeing Roy uh, more than six inches to his side. You, you, you should be next to Secondly, um, I've been very fortunate to live close to the airport. 
And for years, I thought Phil lived in Millbrook because I worked at RDLs, and during the week, I'd see Phil all over. One day, I went up to him and said, Phil, where do you live? And he tells me, it isn't in Millbrook. <laughs> <laughs> but Phil, uh, Phil has been a huge asset to us. And one thing that Phil made 50 years, one of the reasons Phil made the 50 years is because we have food here. There is no one here at United that can find food like Phil. I guarantee you he would have left 20 years ago if we stopped having cakes or anniversary parties at United. But um, back to reality, uh, you've been a huge asset to us, Phil. Um, you know, when I started as a manager, I was new, learn stuff. You've always been there. You've always been trying to help. You, you always did the right thing, not only for your organization, but for ours as well. We do appreciate the support, for, especially for like you and Mikey. Yeah. Uh, been instrumental in our success in the OV. So thank you very much for everything that you've done. Thank you. I want to thank Clark too. Clark flew in from Sacramento just to take the photos. Drove. Drove. Okay. Yeah, six o'clock. I could take that six o'clock. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, oh, here yeah. comes Kim. Great. Yeah, we've had a couple of uh, deals together. Uh, just to be clear, not naked in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hard act to follow those last two, but Phil, um, just what everybody's been saying, you are an incredible asset, and we met in Oakland. Yeah. Right? And uh, I did save your butt on that one. Little story that like to tell every time we're together, but it's it's cool. I mean, one of the things that um, <coughs> I feel hasn't yet been said that about Phil is that now we're all getting a little long in the tooth, at least most of us in the room, including myself. And we're in the give back stage. And he talked about what, um, the newer inspectors. But what he didn't talk about, and what some of you may or may not know, is that he's been very, very helpful for our outreach, helping with tours of kindergarten through whatever, yeah. uh, and, and really trying to sell the career. Because those of us who have been involved in it for so long um, can appreciate what it does for all of us and our families. It's a great job. I, I don't know why more people don't get into it. Especially women. I, I think it's a very odd opportunity uh, for girls to be mechanics. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's because you were part of the outreach. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So anyhow, um, I do want to say thank you so much for yeah. that. And congratulations. Yeah. And my best to your wife. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Phil. Thanks, Bob. Good job. I enjoyed it. Thank you.